Hi folks, this is Rav Ahuja, coming to you from the IBM Toronto lab, walking through the hallways once again to find someone who can talk to us about Wiper 2. See an empty box of chocolates here. I guess I'm a bit too late, but uh, let's see who's here. Matt. Uh, let's knock on the door. Hi Matt, how you doing? Pretty good. Can we today? bother you for a few minutes? Uh, See if you can talk to us about Viper 2. Sure. Sounds great. So Matt is a, uh, a distinguished engineer and one of the uh, key DB2 architects. Um, Matt, now Viper 2 is um, coming out pretty soon and uh, the beta is already out. And one of the things in there, I suppose, is a move towards a threaded architecture. Is that is that right? Can you tell us uh, what that really means? Absolutely, uh, absolutely true, uh, Rav. And we're very excited about this. The next release of, uh, of DB2 on the Unix, Linux, and Windows platforms will be implemented with a multi-threaded internal architecture, as opposed to the process-based architecture that we have today. Now, in order to describe to you what this means in more detail, let me first review DB2's current process space architecture. In this current architecture, each independent, independent task or activity going on within DB2 runs in its own operating system process. So, for example, each connection to a DB2 database has its own DB2 agent process that is used to drive all the SQL requests that are issued on that database connection. Uh, so, for all of you DBAs out there that are listening, I'm guessing that you know that when you use the operating system PS command or process status command on Unix and Linux systems, you'll see, uh, to, to view all the processes, you'll typically see a number of these DB2 agent processes appear separately in the output. Now with the next release of DB2, all of these agents and all the other tasks such as page cleaners, IO cleaners, uh, prefetchers, the logger, they're all going to be implemented as operating system threads all within a single process. So when you use that same PS command, you're, you're just going to see a single process appear. Now, of course, that's going to be a single, uh, it is a single process, but it'll have a number of threads existing within it that will parallelize the activities. But you'll see just that single process. So definitely, a, yes, that's what we're doing in the next release, something we're very excited about. Okay, so that, that sounds like a major change. Um, can you tell us more? You know, why is it being done? What, are, what sort of benefits can, can you expect to see with this threaded architecture? Absolutely. Uh, now, when many people think of uh, the term threading, or when they hear the term threading, they think of uh, lower system overhead, performance improvements. They know that operating systems can generally uh, switch between threads of the same process faster than they can switch between entirely different processes um, because there's no need to switch uh, address spaces. And they know that uh, threads generally have less operating system overhead than processes do. There's no need to keep track of things like the per process user IDs or per process uh, file table. So we cer certainly expect our DB2 customers to, to benefit from these things when, uh, when they uh, upgrade to the next release and, and get the multi-threading architecture. But perhaps surprisingly, that's not really, neither of those things are really the main reason that, that, we're, that we're doing this. The main reason we're doing this is to simplify our internal memory model so that we can in turn generally uh, greatly simplify our external memory model and make uh, DB2 really dead simple to configure. So let's take uh, uh, dynamic memory uh, changes, for example. In, in the previous process space architecture, dynamic memory changes were uh, a bit difficult to accomplish internally because we needed to orchestrate the change of, uh, amongst a number of different processes and therefore a number of different address spaces. Now with the threaded implementation, all, all these DB2 tasks share the same single address space, so it becomes a very simple matter of just uh, changing one single address space in order to accomplish a dynamic change. So that's something that, is, uh, that uh, has made our lives uh, simpler internally and will enable us to, to uh, deliver to, to our customers some uh, very significant configuration uh, changes that will make uh, life simpler for them. That sounds good. So it really is going to simplify the uh, jobs of DBAs and, and DBT users.